The Arctic Air Pure Chill that I bought about a month or so ago has been working out pretty well for me. So I thought I'd get a second one. At first glance, it looks very similar, if not the same, unless you put them side by side and start looking at subtle differences between the two. I'll jump to just showing the unit for a moment until we go back to the boxes because when I took the unit out of the box, it looks different than the other one that I have. And specifically, it's the plastic. It doesn't have a glossy finish to it. It's very matte or like a satin finish. The buttons don't feel particularly great. They feel more like what the Arctic Air Ultra had, kind of a little bit more crunchy, a little less of a positive feel when you're pressing on these. And then I opened it and the inside looks different. When I opened the drawer up, I noticed that the filter was different. It's a much thinner filter than what comes with the Arctic Air Pure Chill that I bought before. So then I started investigating the box to see if there was anything that I could discover that would have indicated that this is a different model than the other one that I have because they both are called the Arctic Air Pure Chill. So let's go back to the boxes now and take a look at the differences between the first one that I bought that I would recommend and this one that I bought that I've had some issues with. Okay, so here are the two boxes. So this is the one I originally purchased and this is the one that I got, which I thought would be the same as this one. The boxes look pretty much the same on the front, right? Some things are moved around, and but the text is kind of the same. Everything seems to be about the same. And I'll flip it on its side here. Same thing talking about the hydro chill technology. Interestingly enough, the one that I purchased that really seemed like it might have had an intent for putting a UVC bulb in it. it. Has a lot more explanatory text on it discussing independent testing that indicates that it actually purifies the air based on independent testing and it removes things out of the water tank. Anyways, there's there's information here showing that there was independent testing done or at least they put it on the box to say that they did it. On the back, yeah, the back of the box is about the same, or the front, I don't know which side this actually is, but they say they pretty much show the same things. You can notice there, there's an as seen on TV logo, but they don't show it on this one. And I'll show the final side, which is the, this is just kind of the stock photos of things, of people using it for various functions, and it looks pretty much the same. Except this one says purifies as it cools, and this one just says UV light built in. But if we flip to the bottom of the boxes, things start to get interesting. On the left side is the one that I purchased that I'd recommend. Okay, this one has a lot more information on it than the second one, which is a bit strange. First of all, the model numbers are different, so I'll just get right off the bat. The model number for the one that I'd recommend is the TVL2105, it's right down here. I'll come back to this one and show it in, in more detail in a second, but I'll just mention these pieces as I go along. It also says that it's rated DC 5 volts 1.5 to 2 amps, whereas the other one just says that it's rated DC 5 volts 1500 milliamps. Also, this is 2021 Ontel Products Corp, and this one is 2020 Ontel Products Corp. Finally, there's an EPA establishment number on here, which that's a whole other video as to why that's there and what it might be for but this one does not contain that at all. I think that's pretty much it for the bottom of the box. So if you're looking for one of these and you don't wanna watch any more of the video, you just wanna know which one's the better one. Honestly, this one is the better one. So look for that information, TVL2105, look for the EPA establishment number, look for the 2021 Ontel Products Corp. Let's just get into why is it, why is this one a better unit than this one? Okay, well, let's first look at the unit itself. Why is this one not as good as the first Arctic Air Pure Chill. The first thing off the bat that, that disappointed me was that they chose to use a different filter. I'd not been able to find replacement filters for this. And so then I started digging around more in, into this and started taking it apart and discovered some interesting things about it. That lead me to believe that Antel or whoever was making these maybe had intended these for distribution last year in 2020. And because of all the things going on last year, uh, it just didn't make it to market. And so they I think they kept selling the, I bought the Arctic Air Ultra last year. So that's the one that was out. So I don't know, maybe this was supposed to be a, a follow-up to it. I'm not sure. If you look down in the back here, 
you'll notice that it's not called Arctic Air Pure Chill. It's called Arctic Air Ultra Advanced. There's advanced really small at the bottom down there, which is different than what's in the Arctic Air Pure Chill because it says Pure Chill on it. The construction of this thing is, is way different where it has screws going up into the body or the, or the tank of this. Yeah, it's a lot of screws. That's three, six, 12, 13, 14 screws. Uh, six on this side, six on this side, and then two for the, the ultrasonic transducer. It, it's really strange. The pure chill that I have that I like, like better has no screws here. There's just a press in snap together assembly, which actually makes it run better. But the one thing that they really focused on in this unit, I think, was maximizing the amount of airflow they could possibly get out of this. It's a bit of a drawback if that's what you're going for. Because for one, if you want the maximum amount of airflow, you have to reduce the size of the filter. So they, they cut the filter down by about a third for its thickness. And which is, I guess, okay. But then you have to find filters that fit this, which for replacements, which they don't seem to be very many of these available if at all. And if I snap it back in here, let me get it back all in place. I'm just gonna turn it on with no water in it. If I could get this, this has a shorter drawer and it doesn't particularly like going back together. Okay, there we go. Here's the lid that, that again, like the other one just kind of floats on top. I'm gonna aim this away from the microphone, but you'll still be able to hear the fan motor and everything come up and you'll notice I think it'll pick it up on the microphone. That there's a bit of a difference in the sound. So here's high. Medium. And low. I'm not sure if you're picking up that high pitch, higher frequency harmonic that's coming off of here, but it seems to be something to do with the lid. And if I press down on the lid, it kind of goes away, but it's still there a little bit. And even when it's filled with water, it doesn't matter. You still get that sound, which is, wow. Can it really get to be <laughs> annoying after a while? So I've taken to like put batteries on top of this thing and like other things to weight it down to try to dampen that frequency and it, it sort of works, but something's up that started causing weird sounds inside of this thing that are just not desirable. Also, it vibrates. It's not very, it's not particularly well balanced. So when it's running, I can just feel the vibration on here. It's so unbalanced. But the one thing it does have going for it is it moves a ton of air. And I think that's what Arctic Air was going for here, or Antel or whoever made this, is that in order to get the maximum amount of cooling, you can only put so much water into the air. So if you can keep increasing the airflow, you'll actually increase the amount of cooling performance to a certain extent. But they changed the fan. The fan is completely different than what was in the Arctic Air Ultra and has a higher current rating. I think it's about, I think it's 0.3 in the Arctic Air Ultra and 0.35 down here. You can see that 12 volts at 0.35 amps. But if you look at the fan blades, it's similar to the Arctic Air Pure Chill, the one that I've already tested, but it's like they were starting to go towards some change in the fan design. And it wasn't until the second iteration, this one that came out this year that, that they've seemed to have gotten somewhere with it. It moves a lot of air, no doubt, but it is definitely noisy. As far as power consumption, if I put a little bit of water in here, got it plugged in here, put the lid back on. Whoa. Okay. So we're drawing about 12 milliwatts, 11, 12 milliwatts, just on idle. It's not doing anything, but when we turn it on, it seems to carefully ramp itself up and really tries to stay around that seven watt mark six and a half, seven watts. So it uses a lot less power than the Arctic Air Pure Chill, the first version that I looked at, or maybe I'll call it the second edition. I don't know, whatever <laughs> whatever it was. The, first, the, the one I've already tested, where that one's actually above, I think it was about eight watts that it was using. But that may not be just the fan, maybe also be the ultrasonic transducer, the, the amount of power going to that. Again, this is on high with the light on as well. 
And if I turn it to medium, about four watts being consumed. And then the noisy low is about two and a half. And I'm curious how that compares to the, the other pure chill. I think the high is definitely, the, the high speed consumes less power, but I think medium and low are about on par with each other. And then without the light on, let's turn the light all the way to the point where it's off. That's not very much, 2.3. Oh, is it really that much? 2.3 to 2.5 approximately. So about another 200 milliwatts used for the, the LED. I'm gonna go take it now, run it through performance testing, and then come back and we'll talk about if it performs any better than the current generation Arctic Air Pure Chill. Okay, back from performance testing. It is interesting. It seems like what Arctic Air was trying to do, or whoever designed this was trying to do, is to, to get more uniform cooling performance across a broader range of temperatures and humidity. It seems like they might have succeeded in that particular area, but it's to the detriment of the rest of the performance of the device. Instead of having, say, like a peak of the, the performance of like a temperature and then relative humidity on your x-axis and the temperature on your y-axis, instead of having kind of like a, a pe more of a peaking area and then it kind of falls off as the, as the relative humidity gets too high above 65, 70 percent, it seems like what they went for with this was to try to flatten that curve a little bit more. And they did that by increasing the airflow. It's actually a 15% increase in airflow over the Arctic Air Pure Chill, but on its high speed, it achieved 133.63 cubic feet of air per minute. On medium, it was at 113.29, and on low, it achieved 95.86. Overall, 15% increase in airflow over the Arctic Air Pure Chill at a lower power consumption. If you look at the transducer, they appear to be about the same size. Let me get them both in here. Maybe it's slightly smaller on this one, maybe it's slightly larger on this one, but what I do know is that this definitely pumps more water through it than, than this one does. It's much more conservative in pumping out the water on this unit, and so it'll run for a longer period of time depending on what speed you have it on. It may also dispense a lot more water initially through the piezoelectric transducer when you first turn it on because this one is after running it for an hour. It fills up the, the bottom of this tray with water, and so that's so the, the filter can stay wet. Because if you turn it on and you wet the filter and then run it for about maybe a half an hour before this, this tray gets filled with water, then the outer three on either side, two to three, definitely do not stay wet. They, start, they dry out pretty quickly because the filter is narrower than the other filter. So let me just get the other filter in there for comparison. This one's dry because it's not being used, but it's, it's definitely quite a bit larger. So this is 25% narrower than this. Very interesting what they were attempting to do here, and I, I don't know if it actually worked. The front of the older Arctic Air Ultra actually has, has reflective Arctic Air. You can see it's kind of mirrored. No, but the new one has kind of a matte finish to it. It's not, it's much more subtle and not reflective and not mirrored at all. Anyways, just other, more differences between the two to help you spot each one of them. I tested it at least two different scenarios. The first scenario is where I try to find a day or a time of day where it's, the humidity and temperature is going to push the unit to the point where it's, it's not going to give you the most optimal cooling. It's within the range that an, an evaporative cooler can work. What I found for this one was we were at about 75 degrees Fahrenheit and the relative humidity was 65%. So it was really humid outside. And so I turned it on, I ran it. Amazingly, this still performed very well considering how humid that was. It's probably the highest humidity I've had so far in testing these things. So with that, the cooling BTUs per hour range between 552.15 and 769.7, .7, which is 13% higher than the Arctic Air Pure Chill. It was tested on a day, I'll have the, the data here, it was tested on a day where the humidity was lower. So it, it, it really did quite well being able to output some amount of cooling when the humidity was notably high. It was, it's approaching 
where it's going to start to really fall off because of just the nature of how evaporative coolers work. Now, here's where it kind of fell apart. When the humidity dropped off again and got to around 54%, so it fell down from 60 down to 54, we're right in the range of where this can operate pretty well. And it's in the range of where the Arctic air pure chill was tested. The output air temperature on this stayed about the same. And I think that's because of the smaller filter and the massive amount of airflow that's going across this thing with the reduced amount of uh, aerosolized mist coming through. That combination keeps the cooling performance consistent, but it doesn't allow it to increase when it's running in more favorable conditions. Now, maybe if the humidity was super low, around 30 or 40 percent, and the temperature was higher, say 75 to 80 degrees, yes, you might get better cooling performance out of this, but you would also get equivalent gains in the other Arctic Air Ultra or the Basin or any other evaporative cooler. So it feels like they really tuned this thing to try to maintain some con more consistency across a, a range of temperatures and humidity, but it came at the detriment of it not performing as well when you had more favorable conditions. Finally, the like the buttons and just the build quality and the noise that it makes, it really is like, no, they can't use this thing. It's, it's really, you have to like weight it down with stuff to, to not make it uh, be so noisy. If there's any more evidence here to show that there is an iteration going on between all of these, let's just take a look at the power adapters. It's kind of hilarious. Here's the one that I tested last year, the Arctic Air Ultra switching adapter. Input universal voltage, actually interesting. Input 100 to 240 volts, output 5 volts at 1.5 amps. Then the one in the middle is the one that I'm, that's right here. It's the Arctic Air Ultra Advanced and it's rated 120 volts. So I'm not sure if this is actually a universal power supply. I think this might only be rated f for US use. No, it's supposed to 50, 60 hertz. Unless they skimped on capacitors or something like that and it's really truly only rated to 120 volts. It seems like it might also be a universal supply. But the newer one, the one that I just, or, yeah, the one I previously tested is the Arctic Air, it says right on here, Arctic Air Pure Chill. So it's Arctic Air Ultra, Arctic Air Ultra Advanced, and Arctic Air Pure Chill. And this also shows the universal voltage and five volts at 1.5 amps. It's the same, the same rating. This is actually made by a different company, actually looks like. All three of these are made by different companies, different manufacturing locations. And what's interesting too, is that this is actually date stamped March, 2021. These don't have date stamps on them that are visible. Oh no, this one does. This one says date code 210120. I would read that as 2021, January 20th. So this is actually manufactured after this one. Wow, that's strange. And this has no date code on it that I can see. Anyways, overall thoughts on it. Because these units need high airflow in order to increase the cooling performance, that's one of the big reasons why these are able to achieve double and triple the amount of cooling BTUs per hour than the a unit, say, like has only a filter or a, has numerous filter sheets in it that doesn't have an ultrasonic transducer and has a lower speed regular computer fan that might only output maybe 50 CFM, 45 to 50 CFM. In order to get more cooling performance out of that similar size package, you have to increase the amount of moisture you're getting into the air so that you can get more evaporation occurring. But that can only go so far because if you just aerosolize a whole bunch of water and you don't evaporate it, there's not a phase change of the water that actually is absorbing heat. It, you need increased airflow to be able to make up that difference. So that's why these units have 100 CFM, 120 CFM, 133 CFM fans to move that air through and to be able to provide the complete equation for that increased cooling performance. It's very interesting how they, what they've done, but if you're looking at these and you happen to see one of these with all the telltale signs that it's this version, unless you're getting a real great deal on it, I'd say pass on it and try to look for one that's, that's the one I tested. Especially because you can just replace these filters with any, you know, there's so many different versions of these filters out there. And the ones that are made by Antel are cheap. Honestly, the major reason why I'm saying no to this thing is because I can't find any replacement filters anywhere. So I don't know if they just discontinued this thing and you can't even get these filters anymore or what happened to it. That's the primary reason. The secondary reason is that it's not particularly impressive as far as its cooling performance. I think that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like it, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.